Okay, in this video, uh, my hope is to help you be able to determine if items repeat or not, and if the order matters, and, uh, and then if it does, then use the appropriate formula for the situation. So, in other words, um, really the hard part about probability, uh, I think, is not, not so much the math, because actually a lot of the, uh, the calculator can do a lot of the heavy lifting for you, but really it's um, trying to decide which uh, formula or which category does the situation fall into. Uh, and, and that will uh, kind of dictate uh, how you approach the problem. So in other words, um, kind of similar to when you're doing equations, you know, or, or when you're given a word problem, when you're given a word problem, you need to know, am I, do I need to divide, the numbers are there, but do you need to divide them, do you need to add them, do you need to subtract them? Uh, it's very similar in probability. You need to figure out, hey, is this a permutation? Am I gonna, should I use the counting principle for this? Is this a combination? Does the order matter? Does the, uh, can the numbers repeat? And so on. So uh, this uh, skill, if you will, uh, is not something that I can teach in, in a 10 minute video, uh, but I can give you an introduction to it. Maybe open your eyes to the things that you should be looking for as you go through these other, uh, the individual topics in this unit. So that you can say, okay, then if, if I'm presented with this kind of situation, then this is the, this is the, uh, the probability uh, formula that I should use or algorithm that I should use. So, uh, with that being said, um, let's just go through an example. Okay, you're going to order. Uh, you want to order some some pizzas, and so, uh, well, you're going to order a pizza. You send your friend to the store. You tell him to get the three topping pizza, but when he gets to the store, he has no idea what three toppings you wanted. Okay, so. Um, you, you know he you know that there are there are nine uh, the store gives you nine different choices to choose from let's say and you uh, your friend is going to pick three out of those nine and you want to know the probability of him guessing exactly the three uh, pizza, pizza toppings that you in fact wanted even though he doesn't know what they are so what would you do to find that out well Almost all of these, really, you probably could use the counting principle for. Uh, you could say there's a three out of nine chance that he would get the first one correct because there's nine total choices. It doesn't matter if you want sausage. Let's say you want sausage and olives and pepperoni. Uh, you don't care if he orders pepperoni first and then olives and then sausage or if he orders olives and pepperoni and sausage. It's going to go all on the same pizza. So the, those three, as long as you get those three items, the order doesn't really make a difference. It's going to effectively be the same thing. So in this case, uh, it would be a, uh, a combination, right? The, you're getting the first three out of nine, or um, you can look at it that way, or you're picking three out of nine and the order doesn't matter. Combination of permutation are usually used if you're, you have a given set out of a certain amount and... Uh, typically, it you know it goes kind of descending. So after you, uh, after for example, after he there's there were nine to choose from, and he, if he gets uh, any one of the three that you wanted out of the nine, then the second he's going to have, let's say he got pepperoni, he got olives and, and sauces to choose from next is the is the two, and there's only eight remaining choices. And so this is how you could do that using the counting principle, but also essentially this is a uh, combination where you're getting the three out of the total um, choices of, of nine times eight times seven. And again, the, the point I want you to get from here is not exactly how to do a combination per se, but since that is a situation where you're getting a certain amount out of another grouping and the order doesn't matter, it would be a combination. Uh, let's say you wanted to know there, there's a race between uh, 10 people and you want to know how many different ways can the top three people finish and so if it if George finishes first and then Sam and then uh, Alex okay let's just say then that is a different ending than if Sam is first and Alex is second and George is third okay so the different ways that 10 people uh, the top three people can place uh, out of 10 uh, there you have to think, well, yeah, there is a difference between if George is first or if George is third. Even though he's in the top three, it's a different first place, second place, and third place. So in this case, 
the top three out of ten would be a permutation. The order does matter. If we change the situation a little bit and we said, well, uh, what if what if we don't care what order it is, but as long as you finish in the top three out of the ten, you can go to Far East. Okay. Well, then that's going to be a combination because if it's George, Sam, and then whoever I just said, Alex, or if it's Alex and Sam and George, either way, they're in the top three. They're going to go to Far East. So again, if it's something out of something and um, and, it, and the order does matter, you can usually solve it with a permutation. If the order doesn't matter, or if the order is changed around, but the, the end result is still the same, then that's a combination. Uh, what if you're, you're picking outfits and you have uh, five shirts to choose from and three pairs of pants to choose from? Well, that would probably be better maybe uh, using the counting principle. You have five shirts and three outfits, so there's a total of 15 different, uh, or five shirts and three pants, there's a total of 15 different outfits you can, you can get. So the chances of getting your blue shirt and your khaki pants if you have one of each of those, it's going to be 1 out of 15. That would be a counting principle. You're not saying I'm going to pick my top three shirts. You're just 1 out of the five shirts and 1 out of the three pairs of pants. Um, what would be, how would you find the uh, probability that you and a friend um, both wear the same exact t you know, you and your friend both have the same five t-shirts. And what would be the probability that on Monday you wear the same one, and Tuesday you wear the same one, and uh, Wednesday, and so on, uh, and you didn't plan it ahead of time? Well, now you're saying if you wear your, your blue t-shirt on Monday and your orange t-shirt on Wednesday, but your friend wears your, their orange t-shirt on Monday and their blue t-shirt on Wednesday, then you're not wearing them at the same time. So in this case, uh, the order would matter, right? You have a, a one in five chance of getting this, the same one on the first day, and then, provided you don't wear the same shirt twice in the same week, you have a, a one in four chance of getting the same shirt uh, the next day, and so on. So actually, that would be a really a factorial. Uh, or again, you could use the counting principle uh, for that. What if I have a deck of cards, and I say, what's the probability of picking an ace, right, putting it back in, and then picking another ace. No, I didn't get it, right? Uh, but if to pick an ace, I would have a 4 out of 52 or 1 in tw uh, 13 chance the first time. And then to get an ace again, I'd have a 1 in 13 chance another time. In that case, um, I could get the same ace twice if I put the thing back in the deck, right? It can repeat. Um, now, so that would be 1 out of 13. Uh, again, times 1 out of 13 to the chance of getting a, an ace two times, and that would be 1 out of 169 chance of getting a probability of getting uh, an ace on the first try, and then again an ace on the second try. Now, if, if, uh, if I change it a little bit and I say, what would be the probability of getting an ace, and then, uh, or two aces, if I just pick out two random cards, one, two. What would be the probability that they're both aces? I didn't get it. Uh, well, in that case, it's changed a little bit. The probability of getting the first one being an ace will be one out of 13. The pro if I take one ace out, there's only three left. And there were 51. Uh, there were, This was um, four out of 52 to begin with, right? Four aces out of 52 cards. And so that's a one out of 13 probability. Well, the second one is going to be, um, if I take one ace out and then I take another ace out, then that means there's only three aces out of 51 cards the second time. And again, I said I'd pull them out at the same time, but the math is still going to be the same. Uh, you have, this simplifies, I think, to one out of uh, 17, I do believe. And I don't know what 13 times 17 is off the top of my head, but um, this is how you can find what would the chances be if, of pulling two aces out of a deck of cards at the same time. So it's a little different because one you're putting it back and one you're not. By the way, that would be a uh, the second one where I, I pull out the first one, I pull out the second. That's a de dependent uh, event because 
the, second, the getting the second ace depends on what you get the first one. Um, let's do a few more. Let's see. What would be the uh, probability of getting an ace and then a queen and then a jack? Well, the ace was 4 out of 52. And if I don't put it back, then to get a queen, there's four queens left of the deck, but there's only 51 cards left in the deck. And then to get, uh, what does I say, a jack, there's four jacks left, but there's only 50 cards left, and so I could multiply this out and then get the probability of getting an ace and then a queen and then a jack. Uh, and I think, again, in that one, uh, the order doesn't particularly um, matter because if you got the it's still if you got the jack first it's still a four out of fifty two chance of getting the jack and then if that was in the, end up being a jack then there's still four queens left after the after the uh, out of the fifty one total cards left so again I hope that wasn't more confusing than it was helpful but the the point is this that again as you're going through these problems. Uh, pay, pay close attention to, okay, what kind of scenarios um, dictate a permutation? What kind of scenarios would be better to uh, use the counting principle for? What, what kind of scenarios depend on the other one? Um, can this number repeat or not, right? Uh, those, those kinds of things. And then, again, with practice, uh, hopefully you'll be able to recognize you know, those things, right? So, so... Last but not least, right, while you're going through the practice, don't just try to get five of the five combinations and then be done with it. Really pay attention to uh, practicing what kind of scenarios you would use each one of these things for. And then once they're scrambled up, in, in, like in real life or, or on a test, uh, you'll be able to pick and choose which uh, probability principle is appropriate for the situation. All right. I know that was a lot. Thank you.